Hi everyone, I'm retired meteorologist Pat Prokop and today is Thursday, September 26th and Hurricane Helene continues to gain strength in the eastern Gulf of Mexico and it's now moving off toward the north northeast at about 14 miles per hour and this is going to increase throughout the afternoon so the storm is going to be moving more rapidly than most hurricanes do and that's going to allow it to punch further inland uh, after it makes landfall later on tonight. Currently, uh, the winds are up to 105 miles per hour. The central pressure is down to 960 millibars, or that's 28.35 on the uh, barometric scale of the uh, inches of mercury. And uh, the storm will expect it to become a Category 3 when it reaches the northeastern Gulf of Mexico and perhaps all the way up to a Category 4, around 130 mile per hour winds when it reaches the coast of the Big Bend area of Florida where horrendous storm so surge tides will be occurring in that area. Usually their tides are somewhere, what, 2 to 3 feet? They're going to be 15 to 20 feet with the passage of this storm. Just terrible, terrible storm surge expected across the uh, Big Bend area of Florida, even along the uh, west coast of Florida, they're going to have some very high tides of five to eight feet, some places up to 10 feet uh, just north of the Tampa Bay area. Meanwhile, for us, we're looking at uh, rain showers and squalls developing across the area. Already, moderate to heavy rains have fallen across our regions overnight, more, much more than that was anticipated. It seems like the models are underperforming a little bit. Uh, anyway, let's take a look at the warnings, first of all. And uh, hurricane warnings, this is extremely unusual. Hurricane warnings uh, as far inland as southwest and central Georgia, all the way up north of the Macon area. Hurricane warning, in effect, uh, that means winds in excess of 75 miles per hour in this whole area here in southwestern and into central Georgia. So if we look at additional warnings besides the hurricane warnings, we have the tropical storm warnings and uh, right there. And look, at, it is just amazing. This storm is so huge. It's one of the largest expanse storms uh, in decades across the southeast United States. And uh, tropical storm warnings, not watch, warning. That means winds in excess of 39 miles an hour, more likely in excess of 50 to 54 miles an hour, uh, cover all of Georgia and all just about all of South Carolina, even goes up into the mountains of North Carolina into the Asheville, North Carolina area. And of course, the entire peninsula of Florida under either a hurricane warning or a tropical storm warning. So with that being said, let's look at some of the rainfalls that we've seen so far today. And uh, overnight had some very heavy rains falling in across my area. Uh, I was expecting maybe a tenth of an inch or a quarter of an inch. Uh, already uh, here at my location right here, the estimated rainfall uh, has been over four and a half inches. And I have already passed the four inch mark in my rain gauge uh, gauges. I have three gauges outside and they are reporting over four inches of rain already. And the storm is not even around us yet. It is way to the south of us. And you can see this band of golden color here. That's anywhere between three to five inches of rain that has fallen from the uh, Hampton County area to the western portions of uh, Jasper County uh, into Effingham County, western Chatham County, even eastern Chatham County on the islands, uh, 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 two to three inches of rain already has accumulated. And further inland, uh, over in around Wrightsville uh, into central Georgia, uh, up to eight inches of rain has already fallen. And let's look at some of the uh, rainfall totals uh, further south and on the Valdosta radar, uh, you can see in and around the uh, Tifton area, Ocala, uh, again, around eight inches of rain has already fallen over here uh, in the Florida panhandle uh, around just southwest of Tallahassee already uh, uh, five, eight, or eight to 10 inches or eight, almost nine inches of rain falling there already. So uh, this, this is already looking quite uh, serious as more is on the way. And looking at the satellite imagery, there you can see the storm uh, over in the uh, eastern Gulf of Mexico. The, the rains that we're getting are from these bands here. Uh, the main bands are well to the south of us right now and southwest of us as this storm continues to draw energy out of the very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico and the storm continues to ramp up. Let's go with a, a visible satellite imagery here and it shows that these thunderstorms piling up and rotating now around the center, closing off the, uh, the eye itself uh, with almost a per per uh, concentric 
uh, area of convection around the eye of the storm. And it's still in the uh, eastern Gulf of Mexico with no inhibit, inhibitant uh, there to cause it to uh, slow down any it, it's only going to get stronger as it moves off toward the north northeast. Now looking at the Storm Prediction Center, the threat for tornadoes yeah, in our area is very high this afternoon and for tonight already. Tornado watches are in effect. I'm going to show you those in just a minute. But uh, there is an enhanced risk for tornadoes uh, for the uh, southeastern portions of South Carolina, all of southeastern Georgia and the northeastern tip of Florida, and then a slight risk for tornadoes inland uh, all on the east side of the rotation of the storm. Now, let's take a look at the um, uh, radars. First of all, uh, here in my webpage, savannapat.name, there's the, uh, first of all, radar coming out of Valdosta. I put the Valdosta radar up. Uh, and a tornado watch is in effect for the greater Savannah area, the upper portions of southeastern Georgia and eastern South Carolina until 9 o'clock tonight. And don't think that after 9 o'clock, that'll be it. No, there'll be another one posted after that. Uh, the worst of the storm actually will, will be between uh, sunset and sunrise with the, the worst, worst portion of the storm uh, between 11 o'clock tonight and 3 o'clock in the morning. Anyway, and the further south, there's another tornado watch in effect for South Georgia and, and North Florida until 10 o'clock tonight. And you can see showers and squalls already developing. And some of these squalls have already been producing torrential rainfalls. And more of that is on the way uh, for tonight. I'm going to talk more about that in just a minute. And looking at the Tampa radar, uh, I'm picking up the eye now. The Tampa radar is picking up the eye of the storm off to the southwest of Tampa over here. Uh, Florida Peninsula is under a tornado watch until 8 o'clock this evening. But there's the leading band of the, uh, the uh, hurricane itself uh, one of the big spiral bands there and then more rain and squalls to the north of that and there's some of the bands uh, coming off well off to the northeast of the storm the storm is huge uh, the estimation storm is um, uh, I believe I yeah it's 345 miles long uh, from the center a tropical storm force winds from here go all the way out to 345 miles away. Usually with a hurricane like this, or, or a typical hurricane, is there such a thing, uh, the, the tropical storm force winds are about 150 to 200 miles away from the center. This one at the moment will be 300, is 345 miles uh, from the center. So that's one of the problems with this storm. It's so huge. All right, let's take a look at the uh, one of the models. The uh, This is the high resolution rapid refresh model. It updates every hour. Now, I think it's going to show the storm a little bit east of the path of the National Hurricane Center, but still, it's important to look at this uh, this model here because as I put it into motion, there it has the storm making landfall somewhere around um, 10 o'clock tonight, to Zulu, that's 10 o'clock Eastern time, and it has the storm right over here in the uh, Big Bend area of Florida as a horrendous uh, possibility of a Category 4 hurricane, 130 mile per hour winds. But look at the size of this storm. These uh, green areas are the tropical storm force winds and uh, it extends well off to the east of the center of rotation. And these winds will be pumping in southeasterly flow across the coast of Georgia and South Carolina. That's going to enhance our tides tonight. Right now, the tide prediction is one to three feet above normal. Uh, but normal t uh, and, and um, the tide for tonight, uh, actually this afternoon, will be at um, 413. That's the time for the high tide, but it's only at 7.6 feet. One great thing about this, the moon's at quadrature. Quadrature means it's uh, at that half phase where the tides aren't as high. Now, last week we had a 9.2 foot tide, and if you add three feet to that, that's a 12 foot tide. But we're not going to get that because the tide's only going to max out at 7.6 feet. So st still, we could get 10, maybe an 11 foot tide. Uh, this afternoon. But an, another issue with this, during the afternoon high tide, if we have any uh, heavy squalls moving across the area, torrential rainfall, there's no place for the rain to, uh, to uh, go, to drain in the coastal counties because the tides will have the uh, sewer system backed up uh, and the drain systems backed up. So 
any heavy rains in the late afternoon to early evening, uh, you can expect urban flooding, uh, very uh, rapid flash flooding that could occur. All right, let's take a look at the conditions further north or further in time as the storm goes northward. And there you can see it's moving in, in and around just to the west of Valdosta. Boy, it's heavy rain calling down right now here at my house. Uh, another squall line is uh, passing on through. Uh, okay, looking at the um, uh, forecast in time, you can see this area here on the east side of quadrant from the southeast to the northeast, that's the what I call the dirty side of the storm. A lot of other people call it the dirty side of the storm. The bad side of the storm, that's where you have the most severe activity. And because of the winds coming in off the Atlantic Ocean as they meet the land, uh, there's friction on the land. So at the surface, the winds die down a little bit. But aloft, just a couple thousand feet above, uh, the winds are still blowing hard. And that produces wind shear, uh, vertical wind shear, and that causes fast track tornadoes or uh, fast spin up tornadoes. And we could have winds of 60 miles an hour outside of the rain bands and in the rain bands we could have winds even higher of 70 miles an hour but if any of these fast track tornadoes develop you can have winds up to 70 to 100 miles an hour in a very short area but if you're underneath that area uh, that's going to be the issue all right i'm going to pause the tape right now because i'm going to take a picture outside what's going on uh heavy rain so hang with me Okay, I just came back in. Uh, I was on the balcony shooting the rain, and look at the rain coming down. Uh, it's coming down in torrents. I was out driving earlier this morning uh, to get the last minute grocery supplies because I'm expecting some power outages, so I'm stocking up on the food. And uh, I was driving through torrential rains, uh, and it was very difficult to see, and there was a lot of deep puddling on the on the roads just here in savannah so be careful uh actually it's not a good idea to be driving around uh during the heavy rain events now going back to the map there boy that rain was wow okay the maps itself uh we're expecting to see very intense storm winds coming in off the atlantic ocean and also inland the winds are going to be very strong this is going to produce a tremendous amount of tree damage and with that you're going to get a lot of power outages so anticipate uh, extended power outages uh, for the uh, uh, tonight and in, into tomorrow, possibly, uh, I hate to say this, possibly going through the weekend for some locations. All right, let's take a look at the um, forecast precipitation. Now, again, I think the models have somewhat have been underperforming in this area here. Uh, the uh, purple area, that's an indication of four to six inches of rain. The golden areas up here uh, anywhere from 8 to 12 inches of rain, maybe even a little bit more. And that's up in the mountains of North Carolina and uh, uh, ex uh, extreme northwest South Carolina. And that's going to cause tremendous flash flooding in that area there. Also in western Georgia and extreme southeast Alabama, uh, a lot of heavy rains falling out there, anywhere from uh, 4 to 8 inches of rain. Uh, 3 to 4 inches of rain common across portions of central Georgia, south Georgia, and into eastern portions of South Carolina. That's the uh, FV3 high-resolution model. Uh, let's take a look at the... Um, uh, the NAM, the North American model, and it's showing basically the same thing. A little bit heavier rain, so on the eastern side of Georgia, uh, uh, well, the Statesboro area and Sylvania up into the Augusta area, very heavy rains expected out there as well. All right, let's look at the conditions. What to expect? Um, this is going to be a bad storm, so expect that you're going to have major issues associated with it. Uh, periods of squalls with torrential rains and strong winds. And you're going to have thunder and lightning associated with some of these as well. And within these squalls, and again, the squalls are brief periods of very heavy rain. Well, this is one of the squalls I just showed you, uh, brief periods of heavy rains. And that's also where you're going to get your fast track tornadoes or fast tornado spin ups. And uh, the winds in some of these squalls will be 60, maybe 70 miles an hour, perhaps. And if you have a fast track tornado, 70 to 100 miles per hour perhaps so you know, keep that in mind we're going to have periods of those uh beginning uh well right now and also through the night the worst part of the storm is going to be from sunset to sunrise with the peak activity 
uh, or danger uh, between, I would say, 10 o'clock tonight to about 4 o'clock in the morning uh, in the eastern counties of Georgia and southern South Carolina, the greater Savannah area, my region where most of my viewers are watching. Uh, winds outside the rain areas, there'll be you know, periods of rain squalls passing through, but when it's not raining, uh, particularly throughout the night after sunset, we're going to see those winds beginning to uh, accelerate, becoming uh, 40 to 60 miles per hour at times with gust. Uh, so that's where you're going to have a lot of issues. Now, with this rain already falling uh, from earlier uh, this morning, overnight, and this morning, and this early afternoon, the ground is becoming quite saturated, so the trees are losing some of that holding power, uh, and the, uh, we're going to probably see a lot of tree damage and maybe trees being uprooted uh, during this uh, time. And um, it, we'll expect with the extensive tree damage, yeah, you're going to have power outages. So be prepared for that as well. Actually, you should be already prepared uh, if you have uh, backup generators and batteries and things of that nature. All right. So again, this is going to be a, a, a very dangerous storm, not only for the northeast portion of the Gulf of Mexico area of the Big Bend area of Florida, uh, Tallahassee, over to Albany, Valdosta, Georgia. Yeah, it's going to be really bad out there, but it's even going to be bad here in the eastern counties of Georgia and eastern and southeastern counties of South Carolina. Uh, this storm is going to leave a tremendous mark of damage across the region. So, Hopefully, I'll have another update later on this afternoon. And the way the computer models are looking at right now, it looks to me just a little bit like the, sh the track is shifting just a little bit further eastwards. We'll keep an eye on that from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, they'll be coming out with a update later on this afternoon at uh, 5 o'clock. They'll do a, a, a mid-afternoon update at 2 o'clock. But thanks for watching. I'm right here on YouTube, uh, my Savannah Pat Weather and Nature channel. Thank you. Bye.